The following program is a presentation of BaseNet Internet Television. Hello, Viewpoint listeners. This is BaseNet Internet Television National Political Correspondent Tony Mizuko coming to you with a Viewpoint special report on the end of the Republican primary race. We are ta- I am joined here this evening for our brief special report with Ed Jupin, our BaseNet Internet Television producer and director of programming. Ed, how are you this evening? Great. I guess we got it right. We did. I'm going to take a reverse order. We're going to bring you just a quick show today to talk a little bit about Rick Santorum dropping out of the race and what this means and where we're going from here. But, guys, I got to do it. I got to gloat. We predicted the end of the primary season. And what happened a few days later? Rick Santorum dropped out. The primary season ended. It's on to the general election, ladies and gentlemen. And through that, we're going to be going back to our mainstream base net format of covering the news and politics affecting the world and the United States and focusing specifically on the general election between President Obama and, I don't even think we can call him the pres- he's still technically the presumptive nominee, nominee, but the very likely presumptive nominee, nominee, Mitt Romney. But there's a couple things I want us to talk about with Santorum's dropping. A little surprising that he didn't wait until the Pennsylvania primary. I think he would have really liked to have won his home state and gone out that night, but polls started to turn against him. Yep, it looked like he wasn't going to win Pennsylvania. It looked like he wasn't going to win in any state throughout the primary season, where it's looked like Mitt Romney's going to win, Mitt Romney's won. So I think if you read the writing on the wall, any state where they were a little unsure and it was probably going to be a Romney win or possibly a Romney win, Romney won. So I think that Rick Santorum saw that and said, you know what, this is this is the time to get out of the race. I know he does have an ill daughter. I hope that didn't take into account. Not that I think he should ignore his uh, yeah, and It might have been partially, daughter, it, but, but I, but know, I think it was... That that would be a small percentage, in my opinion. Uh, not to you know, put her illness as a small percentage, but I think that was a right, small same percentage. Thing. I, mean, I, I think the writing on the wall and the financial issues that you'll probably touch on were probably more serious. Right. I think there's the Santorum's campaign is uh, does have quite a bit of debt, and I think they coming off some of his wins, he really started a plan for a national campaign that just didn't materialize. So he's, like any candidate nowadays, they suspend their campaign so they can continue to collect donations and hopefully pay down debt. He did issue, uh, Santorum did issue a request to his supporters for more support so that he can help pay down his campaign debt and move on. Now, in the past, Barack Obama, for instance, four years ago, helped Hillary Clinton retire some of her campaign debt. I think you're probably going to see this with Romney and Santorum. If for no other reason than I can't see Santorum's campaign having too much debt. Mm-hmm. And yeah, he ran a pretty tight ship. He did. And Romney, not only his campaign, but him personally being wealthy enough to turn around and retire quite a bit of the debt for Santorum's campaign. I don't know how that would work specifically. I don't know how the accountants play all that out. My guess would be that Romney would maybe loan his his own campaign a couple million dollars and his campaign would help pay off a couple million dollars of the Santorum debt, which, again, I don't perceive to be that high, but you never do know. Um, I think that'll happen. Why is Newt Douchebag Gingrich still in the race? I don't know. I can't figure that one out. Just not going to go anywhere. I guess, you know, we've, we've come to realize he's not going anywhere, and, well, okay. But, you know, as I said earlier, Rick Santorum is leaving this with his career intact. Newt Gingrich's career is spinning down the drain faster yeah. and faster. Yeah. Ron Paul, who I'm going to talk about in a minute, if he carries it to the convention, he's he's doing what his supporters want him to do. Yeah, he's his, his career is not going to change one way or another. I mean, he's, exactly. he's, and I he's think, uh, you know, assuming he's not the presidential nominee for the GOP, his career is winding down anyway. So he's got right, nothing, he's, you know. He's even lose. said that he's, he's not running again for re-election right. in Texas. He said this will be his last election one way or the other. And I think for Ron Paul to go out still fighting to the very end, I mean, that's Ron Paul. That's what people would expect for him to stick to his guns. Gingrich, eh, I don't know what he's getting. His career was over 20 years ago, so I don't know what he's trying to prove. That's a good point. Yeah, I don't know either. I'm almost surprised a little bit that Santorum was willing to drop while Gingrich was still pretending to be in the race. Because if Gingrich starts to pick up a little bit, a few votes here or there, a couple of delegates, and starts getting a little bit more media attention, because I think the mainstream media would love to jump on that and say, oh, well, wait a minute, is it really Mitt Romney? You know, Santorum's going to get pissed. Usually what happens in situations like this, you talk to friends, you talk to family, you talk to your advisors, you talk to the party, and you sort of say, hey, what's going on? What's our chances? What's the real likelihood? But I'm surprised Santorum was willing to go out with Gingrich not being uh, out of the race. Yeah, it's funny you mention that. I got an email tonight within an hour or two after Santorum dropped out from the Gingrich campaign. Yeah. Because obviously I subscribe to email alerts from every candidate in either party, no matter how major or minor. Yep, I and, see the Herman Cain and with, updates. within an hour, I get this email from Gingrich saying, last conservative standing. 
you know, so right away they pumped out this email, last conservative standing, and he's fighting through till the end. Yeah, I, I just I don't get it. I think he's done. I don't think I mean you're going to see a small uptick from the people who don't want Romney, but whatever. Gingrich is just Gingrich. He's coming very close to a D endorsement. There's one more thing I want to bring up as we uh, wrap up just our brief special coverage to let you know what happened here. Uh, we are a media outlet, even though we're not the mainstream media. I'm still predicting a Ron Paul secret plan with Texas and California. I happen to receive one of my campaign emails from uh, Ron Paul recently talking about Texas and its 155 delegates and how it's a big state and how he's hoping to do well there. So similar to Gingrich, he's uh, staying in the race. Although, again, very different from Gingrich. I wouldn't say that Paul has a shot necessarily, but a better chance for people to actually rally around Ron Paul than Newt Gingrich. Ron Paul has yet to have his surge, so to speak, and everyone else did. This could be the time for the Paul surge. I think he's got character. I think if Gingrich tries to go up against him, it's not going to help him. I think Paul also is going to be pushing the issues that he believes in, not to say that Gingrich doesn't push his issues, but uh, you know everyone's going to be looking at Romney and Obama, and Gingrich is going to be agreeing with Romney on a lot of things, and you know maybe saying a little bit more this way or a little bit more that way or a slightly different idea here or there, and Paul's still going to have his very different view on things. So I don't think we've heard the last from Dr. Ron Paul. I hope to God we've heard the last from Newt Gingrich. But we have, as it appears, heard for the time being the last from Rick Santorum. So I guess I do want to thank San Mr. Santorum for his campaign. I remember back, I think it was last summer, everyone was saying he, was, he wasn't he was going to get anywhere. His campaign was polling at 1%, and he came close to being the nominee. It's interesting that four years ago, the conservatives were really split between Mitt Romney. Everyone seems to forget this. We have such a short political memory in this country. They were split between Romney and Huckabee, and McCain ended up winning. Well, this time, a lot of conservatives ended up getting split between, there were a lot of other candidates early on, but Gingrich and Santorum, and then Romney ended up winning, so... Santorum is set up well for 2016 or 2020 or 2024, uh, as the situation uh, dictates. I just, you know, he ran a great campaign, and I think and he still even, ended on top. We even got a show title out of him. This is true. We did get a whole show title out of him. I, I <laughs> hope that we can get more out of Mitt and out of the president. But this is uh, what we have for you this evening. We just wanted to bring you a brief, brief update on the campaign. Again, to point out that Viewpoint did get it correct as we move into the general election. But you can stay toned for the next episode of Viewpoint where we will be bringing you general election coverage as well as going back to our news and media around the world and in the United States coverage as well. We'll really start to get back into some of the issues as we did earlier on. We will be bringing that to you soon. Once again, this is Tony Mizuko with Base on Internet Television. I'm here to join this evening with our producer and director of programming for BaseNet, Ed Jupin. And this was our brief special coverage of the end of the Republican primary as we see it. <laughs> on Viewpoint, how to get the little extra plug in there. But you folks have a great evening.